Good evening, folks. We have gone over many significant signs of increased solar impact on the Earth, and yet this is without significant solar activity. The reason this is happening is that Earth's defensive magnetic shield is weakening. We have seen it in the ionosphere and atmosphere, but last year we saw it plainly in the aurora. Let's quickly watch a rundown from late 2023, and then we'll go over the importance of the newest evidence that we got this morning. Folks, it's not stopping. The auroral displays are completely out of control, and if we weren't several years into clown world, I'd be shocked the media isn't discussing it. We mentioned it this morning. The 2003 Halloween solar superstorm produced low-latitude aurora down to the southernmost states. This has happened before, but not often, and it takes major X-class solar flares, extreme speed CME plasma striking Earth, and top-level geomagnetic storms. I went ahead and looked up the times that Aurora were seen in the southernmost states, and here is a brief list going back to the Carrington event of 1859. The top lines are ones that happened in the same solar cycle. They certainly seem to be getting more common as time goes on, even as light pollution makes them harder and harder to see. This fact alone is a signal that Earth's Aurora are getting more extreme, and with the fact that solar activity is not breaking any records, it confronts normalcy bias and reminds us this is exactly what we are expecting as Earth's magnetic field weakens in the ongoing excursion and magnetic pole shift. From 2018 to 2020, we said over and over, we'll be needing to closely monitor the aurora in the upcoming solar cycle to see if the trend continues. It certainly has. Just this year, we've had several events. In September, a solar storm which was not major, which was not triggered by an extreme speed shockwave, and which had no X-class solar flare, caused the auroral activity to be visible from Arizona. The same thing happened in August. Once again, no X-class flare, the solar wind was moderately strong at best, and the geomagnetic storm didn't even hit KP7. But aurora were visible in Arizona nonetheless. The storm in April was fairly strong, but still not at the top level disruption, still no mega CME or X-class flares, and yet the aurora were visible in Mexico and southern Texas. It happened in March as well, again, from a solar event that was only moderately strong, but which produced a fairly strong geomagnetic storm, still not top level, yet aurora were visible from New Mexico, and a few reports even came in from Florida. Folks, there has never been any year where far southern aurora were seen as many times as we've just had. This is a record, and the year's not over yet. What's worse is that the geomagnetic storms have not hit the top-level disruption, and the solar activity that triggered them was moderately strong at best. We've said it before, let's say it again. The Earth is becoming more and more vulnerable to solar activity. I would never deny the significance of the ongoing economic issues, potential for World War III, loss of freedom due to governments in the World Economic Forum pulling their Agenda 2030 nonsense. But folks, despite the evidence being right in our faces, the media is completely ignoring what is happening to the Earth. The magnetic pole shift and geomagnetic excursion are progressing, and in the coming years, we're going to lose all modern technology and the foundations of modern civilization. It doesn't get much worse than this, especially since other real global issues seem to be overshadowing it completely in the public forum. We've seen this evidence in the magnetic field itself, the polar motion, the ionosphere, and the atmosphere. Alas, now an auroral record has fallen. The sun isn't doing anything crazy, so it once again shows us another sign that Earth's geospheres are in big trouble and us along with them. I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone. Folks, just five days after that video was posted, it happened again. Of all the evidence we've seen so far, the auroral records being obliterated in a modest solar activity year was really something else. This morning, we are taking a different angle on these events with the equatorial electric field perturbation from penetrating fields. Those fields are directly related to how much protection Earth has against that penetration, and this impact in April was indeed unexpected, unless of course you factor in the fact that Earth's magnetic field is weakening. In that case, things like this are exactly what you'd expect to see. In fact, 
This storm was one of the ones in that video that we rewatched at the start here. The sun didn't do very much, and yet the storm impact to Earth was fantastic. Folks, it is one thing to just go by auroral events, but it is the keen attention to scientific journals that reveals the supporting details like this. If you just happened across this article, it may be interesting. If you know the magnetic field of Earth is weakening, it might make you stop and think twice. And if you know that the storm that they're describing here was one of those shockingly unexpected low-latitude auroral events of 2023, then you can begin to put the pieces together. That's why we're here. The magnetic excursion and next disaster cycle of Earth marches on. Background evidence videos are in the description box below this video. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.